Just before we get into this video guys, if you want to follow me on social media, on Twitter and Instagram, the links are here. And if you also want to support me on Patreon as well and help out my channel, that would be absolutely awesome as well. But, let's get on with the video. Doctor Who over the years has given us some incredible stories, but it has also showcased the talents of some incredible writers. And what I want to do in this video is, after talking about, and I mean this is years ago now, me talking about some of the best, some of the worst companions, and I think I've done like the Doctors as well. I want to talk about some of the best writers that Doctor Who has ever had. Now this isn't really a video of me saying like, yes, this is definitively the top five best Doctor Who writers of all time. No. I just want to put forward some names, give a couple of reasons as to why I think they should be in the hat, and let you guys decide what you think. Because obviously the internet is the perfect place for everyone to agree. I suppose as well a video like this does depend on what you want out of Doctor Who. What sort of stories that you like, what styles of stories that you like, or writing styles that you like. Do you like the more humorous writers, the darker writers, the more science fiction writers, the historical writers, the political writers, it doesn't matter what it is, everyone has their favourite. For me, I think objectively there is a correct answer, but at the end of the day that's just my bias and of course that is still an opinion. But either way, Let's get talking about some writers. So, Chris Chibnall. <laughs> Never in a fucking million years. Ever. No. Torchwood. Possibly. Doctor Who. Fuck no. First writer I want to put forward is Terry Nation. Now, Terry Nation, of course, is the inventor, creator of the Daleks. Now, it wasn't just him. Obviously, there was a lot of stuff behind the scenes with Ray Cusack, who designed the Daleks. But Terry Nation wrote a fair few scripts for the Daleks. He also wrote a couple of other scripts that weren't Dalek related, such as The Keys of Marinus and one of my personal favourite stories, which is The Android Invasion. You could argue that without Terry Nation, Doctor Who as a show wouldn't have carried on. An Unearthly Child wasn't the story or the reason why Doctor Who went on to be the success that it would become. It was because of the Daleks or the Dead Planet or whatever you want to call the original Dalek story. That Terry Nation script really captured the imagination of children all across the UK or the world. I don't know how global it was back then. I'm assuming not very. That original Dalek story was the catalyst for everything else that would go on to be what we know as today as Doctor Who. It might not be the best story. Hell, it might not even be the best Dalek story. But you can't argue that it's not impactful or influential because it most definitely is. Terry Nation of course wrote some other pretty good scripts for Doctor Who but I think the major one that I think people would expect me to talk about here when I mention Terry Nation is Genesis of the Daleks which of course is one of the best stories ever. It's one of the best fourth Doctor stories. It's just all round a genius script. So for writing Genesis alone and for being the catalyst to Doctor Who's success, I've got to throw Terry Nation's hat in the ring, even though I wouldn't really expect people to be like, yep, Terry Nation, definitely one of the best ever. Next up, Terence Dix. Again, a writer who is very influential in the success of Doctor Who. From the late 60s to the mid 70s, Terence Dix was almost like the uncle of Doctor Who. I think most people of a certain generation would associate Terence Dix with the novelizations by Target. So stories back in the day, you obviously just couldn't go on BBC iPlayer and check them out or buy the DVDs or the Blu-ray box sets. What you had to do was just read a book of it because once it's gone, it's gone. Terence Dix wrote the majority of those Target novelizations, but to say that he was a fantastic book writer is a disservice. Terence Dix was influential, particularly throughout the late Troughton and all of John Pertwee's era of Doctor Who. For a lot of people, the John Pertwee era into the Tom Baker era is the golden age of Doctor Who, and Terence Dix was one of the main people behind that. Not only did he write scripts for the program, but he was also the script editor, so he would edit scripts that were coming in and put his own spin on them, clean them up, tidy them up, make them tighter, all this sort of stuff. Terence Dix's presence can be felt throughout the entirety of the early 70s, and one could argue that he is the reason why that era was so successful. Now, of course, he did write his own individual stories as well. Some are better than others. I mean, a story like Horror of Fang Rock, for example, I think is a very good story. But for me, is that one of the greatest stories ever? 
I don't know. But he is an influential figure, so I would throw him out there. Russell T. Davis is a name that I'm going to throw forward as well, purely because I think Russell had a very difficult job. He had to take Doctor Who, this, let's face it, dated science fiction show that was cancelled way back in the 80s. They tried to bring it back in the 90s and it didn't quite work. Was there still an appetite for Doctor Who? Of course there fucking was. But Russell had to bring it back for a brand new audience. I wouldn't be sat here now if it wasn't successful because he's the reason his writing, his scripts, his characterizations are what got me into Doctor Who in the first place. I think Russell wrote some really incredible stuff and the way that he put Doctor Who in the modern era, in the 21st century, he changed the format, he put his own twist on it, you know, it was more drama based. The companions and their home life and their backstories would be a more prominent feature in the show, which is something that we hadn't really seen before. The Doctor was very, very different to the character that we knew him as pre-2005. You've obviously got the stuff with the Time War. The Doctor had the Time War to deal with now, which added new layers and depth to the character. I think the problem with Russell sometimes is that he would go too big and too adventurous and sometimes write himself into a corner. The prime example of this is the series three finale. I think it starts incredibly well with Utopia and the sound of drums. Last of the Time Lords though doesn't know what it wants to be and it just ends up being this do sex machina bullshit but you can't deny that Russell did write some really great stories and I think the way that Russell wrote story arcs, the way that Russell wrote character, yeah I'm definitely putting him up. A choice that I think a lot of people will be like, nah he's not serious, he can't be serious. Yeah genuinely, Stephen Moffat, hey listen, right, Mr Moffat, if you're watching, we've had beef, I've said some things. You probably don't know who I am so you probably haven't responded and said anything to whoever it is. But, on your day, you're actually a pretty good writer. I mean, of course he is. My favourite series from the new era of Doctor Who is Series 5. Some of the best stories in the previous era of Doctor Who were written by Stephen Moffat. And what I will never ever take away from Moffat is the fact that, you know what, alright, sometimes the stories, they're fucking garbage. But at least you came up with an interesting, unique and clever idea. The only problem is you try and fuck yourself in the arse with it and it just doesn't work. Moffat could be too ambitious sometimes. Moffat could try and be too clever. Moffat would also do a couple of things here and there that flat out just didn't need to happen. Bringing up the fact that the Doctor's half human again. No one needed that. Having Clara be so integral to the Doctor's history. No one wants that either. However, when Moffat got it right... When Moffat hit that sweet spot, he could write some incredible Doctor Who stories. The Empty Child and the Doctor Dances, of course, is a phenomenal script and is probably the reason why I am a Doctor Who fan. So, as much as I give him shit, and I think pretty much Series 6 onwards, he goes on a massive downward spiral, there were still glimpses of it. So... Yeah, Moffat, of course. A choice that I think a lot of people, again, wouldn't expect me to say, but I'm going to bring up Eric Saywood. Now, Eric Saywood, for those of you who don't know, was not only a writer, but he ended up being the script editor during the mid-80s, sort of the Davison into the Colin Baker era of the show. Eric Saywood is responsible for writing what I would say is the best and my favourite Cyberman story that we have seen on TV. Earthshock is fucking brilliant and I think Eric Saywood did a masterful job with that script and I think not only that Eric Saywood had a knack of writing stories with older villains and making them work with new ideas so Earthshock prime example that's fantastic Revelation and Resurrection of the Daleks I would say are two of the best Dalek stories ever. He wrote them both. Attack of the Cybermen as well a lot of people give it shit I actually quite like that one. The Visitation is also a really, really interesting Doctor Who story, and I'm a big fan of that one also. You could see Eric Saywood implement more darker elements to Doctor Who, and that's something that I always appreciate. I like when Doctor Who goes a little bit too far than what it should do. I don't want it to go full throttle and like Torchwood level, but I like it when Doctor Who just sees the line and just, just tiptoes over it a little bit. Eric Saywood did that incredibly well and you can see his influence as script editor as well, particularly in Colin's first season. And you know what? With hindsight, it's actually a pretty good season. And last, but by no means least, Robert Holmes. For me, 
when I said at the start, objectively there is a correct answer. This is it. Every single story that Robert Holmes wrote, I enjoy. Obviously, there's some shit ones. I think the first one and the last one that he wrote, they're not great, but they're still watchable. Purely for the little Holmesisms that you get in them. The double acts being one of them. That is a known trait of Robert Holmes scripts. But all the ones in between those two not so good ones. They're all fucking phenomenal. There's not a single script that I look at throughout that entire run where I'm just like, mm, well, he could have done this better, he could have done that better. Robert Holmes was the master of writing Doctor Who. In fact, he even invented the master. Again, when I said about Doctor Who being darker, Robert Holmes was impeccable with that. Eric Saywood essentially tried to be Robert Holmes. And if you're trying to copy that formula and you're doing it well to a certain degree, then of course you have to be on this list. But Robert Holmes was the originator of that sort of stuff. Some of the stories that Robert Holmes put forward for the show, they're the best ever. Without doubt, they are the best ever. The likes of Caves of Androzani, the likes of the Ark in Space, Spearhead from Space. Even stories that kind of go under the radar, like the Sunmakers, are great Doctor Who stories. They're sort of stories that you forget about, but then you remember them and you're like, oh yeah, that's actually a pretty good one. The Time Warrior, that's another one. The Talons of Wen Chiang, yes, all right, it's controversial now, but it's a phenomenal Doctor Who story. When he was script editor and Philip Hinchcliffe was the producer, that is arguably the best period of Doctor Who. Obviously, I am biased because it's my favorite era of the show with my favorite Doctor and my favorite companion. But there's a reason why I think that. It's not just Tom Baker. It's not just Elizabeth Sladen. It's because the writing was so good. Hinchcliffe and Holmes, they found a fantastic balance between one another. They found a great dynamic. That sort of really dark, gothic horror with some black comedy in there as well. That's exactly how I like my Doctor Who. But even outside of the Hinchcliffe Holmes era, he still wrote some incredible stuff. I mentioned the Caves of Androzani. That is arguably the greatest Doctor Who story of all time. A story like The Two Doctors, I know is not popular, but I really, really like that one. So much so that I've had Colin sign my DVD of it. The stuff that he wrote in the John Pertwee era as well. For me, he's the all round perfect Doctor Who writer because he finds the balance between multiple different genres. He can do any type of story, whether it's futuristic, whether it's historical, modern day, based under siege, murder mystery, whatever it might be, he can do it. He can do the comedy aspect of it. He really, really shines when Tom Baker is portraying the Doctor and he writes for him. But that's not to say that he doesn't work for Davison. In fact, he brings out the best in every single Doctor that he writes for. For me, there will not be a better writer for Doctor Who. Than Robert Holmes. In the comments below though guys let me know what you think. Who are some of your favourite Doctor Who writers? Do you agree with the choices that I've made? Who would you say is the greatest Doctor Who writer of all time and why? Don't just be like oh yeah it's this person. Yeah but why? Give me reason. If you enjoyed this video make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe for more. Social media and Patreon links will be in the description below as always but till next time guys keep forgetting that other bit. If you do any of those things, I will love you forever. But until next time, guys, now we're doing it. I will see you in the next one. So take care of yourselves. Goodbye.